Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Occugen stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Occugen, formerly called Histogenics, is a biopharmaceutical company focused on discovering, developing, and commercializing therapies for eye diseases. It offers a diversified ophthalmology portfolio that includes gene therapies, biologics, and small molecules that target retinal and ocular diseases. It is leveraging its modifier gene therapy platform to address genetically diverse inherited retinal disorders and dry age related macular degeneration. But the main reason the stock has gone through the roof lately was because it is working with Barrett Biotech on developing a COVID vaccine. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.9 billion market cap. They're trading at 1028 a share and they have 187 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and they have negative net income every year as well. This company is pre-revenue so they haven't had any revenue yet. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is their operating expenses. Examples are research and development, also depreciation. Below that is their operating income, which is negative every year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then there's other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or other non-cash gains and losses. Then their pre-tax income and then their net income. So of course they have negative net income every year since they have no revenue. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And of course they have negative free cash flow every year. Since they're losing cash every year, they need money from somewhere to run their business. In 2018, they issued 25 million of capital stock, then 22 million, then 39 million. When a company issues capital stock, it dilutes the current shareholders. They issued 600,000 of debt in 2017, 200,000 in 2018, and 5 million in 2019. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow at some point, you don't have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. Operating cash flow is net income converted to cash. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, then you have to add back the depreciation, that was $73,000, then a million dollars in stock-based compensation, and then minus 2.8 million in changes in working capital. So even though they reported a $15 million loss, they actually lost $13 million of cash flow from their business because net income is not cash, it's accounting profit and loss. Let's look at the capital structure. $11 million of equity, $1 million of debt. So they're 89% equity, 11% debt. And their net debt is negative $6 million. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $6 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 18%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $2.9 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's and the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.5 billion. We divide that by 187 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 776. They're trading at 1028, so they're trading at a 32% premium. It's a sell according to the model. You cannot use a traditional discounted cash flow model to value this company because the way a discounted cash flow model works is you look at the prior free cash flows and then you estimate those out into the future. 
Since the prior free cash flows are negative, the future free cash flows will be negative, and that would give you a negative stock price, which is impossible. Based off of analyst estimates, the company shouldn't generate any positive free cash flow until after 2024. Then analysts do expect the company to generate positive free cash flow at some point if everything goes right. Of course, this may never happen and they may never generate positive free cash flow and go out of business. Alternatively, their COVID vaccine and other medicines can be really successful and they have tons of free cash flow and become a massive business. But no one has a crystal ball and can predict these things. We just need to use the information we have to try to figure out the future. This company did a 1 for 60 reverse stock split in 2019. That's why this chart looks weird. In the past few months, the stock has gone up a ton. But if you look at the past few years, it looks like the stock did terrible. Just a few months ago, the stock was below 50 cents. And you could see the stock was really driven up the past couple of weeks. This company is not generating any revenue. The reason the stock price is going up is because investors are looking towards the future or they're looking to get in and out and make a quick buck. But a company doesn't benefit from an inflated stock price. The only benefit they do receive is if they issue more stock and dilute the current shareholders, which they're doing. So they're gonna receive $23 million in proceeds on a new stock offering. That should close on February 10th. Four analysts are looking at this stock and the average price target is $7.38. This article talks about the stock price moving from $0.29 cents to almost $16, an increase of over 5,000% in just 18 days. The only reason it went up so much is because it's looking to develop a COVID vaccine. This company went up over 1,800% in the past 52 weeks. The S&P 500 went up 16% in the same time frame. The 52-week low was $0.17, cents, the high was $19, and the stock is trading well above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is an extremely liquid stock. 80 million shares were traded on average the past three months, and 250 million shares were traded on average the past 10 days. That's an unbelievable number. Of the 187 million shares outstanding, 155 million are on float, 13% are held by institutions, and 7% are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd have $168 today. That's mainly due to that reverse stock split. Of course, if you invested two weeks ago, you could have turned that $10,000 into a ton of money. Vanguard is the biggest shareholder at 4.5%, then BlackRock, then three individuals connected to the company. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market's 9, the median is 14, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They have no sales, so we can't look at the price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 175, a terrible ratio. That means investors are paying $175 for $1 of equity. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can easily cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are over seven million of cash and seven million of assets held for sale. The company does not seem to have enough capital to run its business over the next 12 months. But it did that recent stock offering, so it should have enough cash coming in to run its business. Their most recent free cash flow was negative 13 million, and they have 11 million of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. But that's from their last published balance sheet. It does not include any recent stock offerings. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 10 companies in the same industry as Akigen, and if Akigen has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse than everything except debt. They're 11% debt, and the average is 13%. They're not using much debt to run their business. They're mainly issuing stock to fund their business. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 32% premium, but it's really difficult to value a stock that has no revenue. So it could be a really risky long-term play, of course, anything can happen. I'm sure people who made a lot of money recently are really happy. But in my experience, when people make a lot of money, they don't sell. They think it's going to keep going up. And they end up selling at a loss, or they sell at a lower stock price than they could have. 
A lot of people think when a stock price is going up, it's going to go up forever. And when a stock price is going down, it's going to go down forever. So if you were to invest in this stock, it would be more of a timing game, not so much of a long-term play. Unless, of course, you had money to burn. So I ranked their free cash flows 1 out of 10 because they're always negative. Revenue 1 out of 10 because it's always 0. And their ratio is 1 out of 10 because they're all pretty weak. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.